What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video and we are taking a look at some very nice attacks that showcase some of my favorite tips and tricks that you can use. Uh, these are things that can make or break your attack um, and you know, knowing these different ideas we're going to talk about today can make any attack uh, better. So let's start at Town Hall 13, we'll work our way downwards here. Um, this strategy is becoming increasingly popular, um, especially with the log launcher uh, having been added, able to open up a lot for this witch super giant attack at Town Hall 13. You can see here, um, actually it happened pretty fast. There's a lot to see in this attack, but one thing I really liked was the use of just a couple headhunters. Actually, it hasn't happened yet. Um, a few headhunters going to be used over on the side there to help take down the royal champion. Uh, there's only one witch out there, so it helps having the headhunters just come in. Few troop space investment. I guess for three of them it was 18. Could have got away with only one or two headhunters. Um, but they get the job done and they allow that uh, side to just continue to develop with the witch and then the super giant tanking a little longer for it. So one thing you should always look to do if you can is just use a suit... Um, a headhunter rather on the side of a base with witches somewhere where there's going to be a hero that is a good way to make sure the hero doesn't overpower your troops um, so it applies to not just witches but any different uh, type of attack you're doing where you have troops moving through the base and you're going to encounter defensive heroes the headhunters only six troop space great way of dealing with the heroes and because they target heroes um, you can use them in creative ways to kind of cut across the base after they take out a the, the barbarian king for example and they cut across to the next hero uh, they may trigger traps activate the clan castle which can be desirable um, it can also not so keep that in mind as you're using them um, taking a look here also at a town hall 12 attack going on number 12 uh, no pun intended with that we're taking a look at a super witch attack, and I think this was a great use of the wall breaker under the jump spell. I don't think this was added in the most recent update, but it is a relatively recent feature that a lot of people still don't take advantage of, is when you're trying to you know, use the least amount of spells to get your troops through the base, uh, jump, spell, jump spells, earthquake spells, uh, they add up quickly if you have to jump through an entire base. But it's important to you know open up the base for these super witches because they don't do a lot of damage. Otherwise, they're going to take a long time to get through walls if they need to. So in this case, the uh, attacker is bringing two jump spells and a super wall breaker, using the jump spell first to open up uh, that initial entry, which is important to make sure there's a clear path because super witches are so hard to funnel. Uh, but they use the lightning spells there also. Um, along with the warden walk made there uh, basically no choice the witches have to go in the king siege barrack uh, with the wizards to help create the other funnel so great great funnel this is one of the best like most ideal funnels you can have for a super witch attack I mean it extends all the way you know to the town hall still a very tight funnel here um, but you'll you saw just a few moments ago the wall breaker taking the super uh, sorry the super wall breaker taking the jump spell which allowed this all to be possible um, the super wall breaker, of course, pretty reliable, you know, relatively high in hit points compared to a normal wall breaker. So if you have access, especially if you're in a friendly war where you can just, you know, pop one up for no cost, uh, the super wall breakers are reliable enough to take that jump spell and get deep in the base, opening up a layer of walls. Then there was one more jump spell for the back end. Everything, of course, spreads out there, which is not always the best, but in this case, there were so many troops still alive that it worked out fine. I think a few witches come in there from the uh, clan castle after the siege barracks popped open. Um, nice compliment to the super witches, you know, having these other witches kind of wrap up the outside of the base here. Uh, as usual, time is the only concern, and I think there was plenty of time, especially with the help of these cleanup troops. We will fast forward, there we go, um, and take a look at our final attack, Town Hall 11. Number 28 here. So this attack was a great example of how to use the, uh, what's called the blizzard, the super wizards in the battle blimp, and then these invisibility spells. 
and really investing a lot, a whole lava hound just to tank to get that blimp into the middle of the base because it's just so worth it here to have those super wizards. I think um, a couple of them, or maybe one of them got outside the jump spell, but or not the jump spell, the invisibility spell. Actually, no, they might all be there. Um, but you can see how much it's worth it, even for a lot of spells, even for that lava hound at the beginning, and even for the entire use of the uh, siege machine and the clan castle troops inside. I mean, look how much of the base is cleared out. I think pretty much every expo is gone. Um, the eagle, of course, is gone. The clan castle troops, besides that, super minion got deleted. So really, I mean, the value is just incredible that was uh, got from, from this uh, technique. It's often used at Town Hall 12, Town Hall 13, but I would say Town Hall 11, you know, even if you have to invest quite a bit, it's definitely worth it. And, um, it, you know, just made even better here by using the Queen to come in, take out the Inferno Tower, um, and set things up for a nice lol around the rest of the base. Still is pretty, pretty good on both uh, spells and troops. One thing to keep in mind is, you know, oftentimes... Before this strategy, the Electro Dragon um, was popular in the Battle Blimp to do a similar job, and you would usually have a lot less spells because um, it typically involved a clone spell, which you know takes up three space compared to the invisibility is just one. So when you think about it, uh, really getting a lot of value for the investment, even if it takes a little more than you might think uh, you otherwise should use. Uh, the Lala is just going to push through the base here, plenty to get it done. Wizard Tower is actually pretty low right there. Almost got that as well. Still has the Warden's ability. I believe it will be used here in just a moment. Or maybe not at all. Yeah, there it is. Um, so this attack wraps up, and so does the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, appreciate all the support, as usual. Be sure to enter that creator code. Um, if you haven't recently, it resets every once in a while, about a week or so. Um, really helps me out. So I appreciate that and um, be on the lookout for uh, new content soon. That'll do it, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.